I feel like a freaking beatnik when I'm wearing this long sleeve black shirt. So arguably the granddaddy of fighting games is of course Street Fighter 2. It pretty much laid the groundwork for tournament fighters from then till now. I mean, let's be realistic here. The fighting games were kind of a weird thing. They weren't really a genre. They were kind of considered more beat-em-ups on just a 2D plane with just a one-on-one -on -one fighting system. But Street Fighter 2 came along and was like, no, we're gonna change everything. We're gonna have different characters that have different moves and add combos into the game and stuff. And its impact is still felt till today. I love the Street Fighter franchise. But the last Street Fighter game I played was actually Ultra Street Fighter 4. I never got around to playing Street Fighter 5 because I hated the way that that game rolled out. I thought Capcom did a really terrible job with just so much limited content on day one, and I just didn't like that whole idea. Of course, you have debates nowadays whether fighting games and beat em up games are worth a full price point of the game. So you kind of have to do things sort of beyond just the basic fighting stuff in order to get casual people more invested in your franchise. Street Fighter 6, though, has looked pretty incredible since we first saw it. I've been playing this game a ton and there are a bunch of things I want to say because this to me might be one of the most complete fighting games of all time. So that's what we're going to talk about in today's video. Now, breaking down Street Fighter 6, there are three different modes in which you will be playing as. The first thing we're going to talk about is the World Tour mode. Now, if you've seen any sort of videos and promotional material for Street Fighter 6 leading up to this, you've probably seen the pseudo open world game mode known as World Tour and been like, how does this actually work? And it works in an interesting manner. Essentially, you are a character that is under the tutelage of various Street Fighter masters, and you're trying to level up your character and learn different moves. There's a pseudo story with gangs invest or infesting the area, and you have to sort of take out the gangs and stuff like that. It's nothing super deep, but there are some interesting twists and turns. Now, admittedly, I've only played about two hours or so of this mode, but I think it offers a lot of stuff in terms of replayability and just fun factor. One of the the cool things is you could just walk up to an old lady and like whoop her ass just like literally whoop her ass on the street and like throw her to the ground and like beat her up and stuff and it's cool you don't get arrested or anything like that nobody seems to care that you're just this big guy running around beating up women I guess because you could be technically a woman beating up guys because it's all based on character creation. You create your character down to his look or their look and of course outfit them with different clothing. Now the clothing is interesting because as you unlock different clothing and you could buy them, you basically get different attributes from these clothing that sort of can soup up your character a little bit. Like I said, your character is constantly leveling up as well and the way you level up is by fighting people. As you play throughout this mode, you'll come across different Street Fighter Masters and learn their stuff style and what's cool about that is you could then learn their special moves and then incorporate them into your own move set so you could sort of pick and choose what special moves your fighter has i like this system i think it's pretty fun you know you can sort of over level your character a bit and then fight a bunch of people all at once but you're constantly getting experience it's constantly worthwhile and validating and you end up visiting some interesting locations as you learn from different masters throughout the game obviously certain masters are based on certain regions and you actually visit those regions within the game now it is worth mentioning that some of the regions are much smaller than other regions your main hub world is kind of the biggest one that you'll encounter but i like this you know there's some nods to final fight within it the name of the city and all that sort of stuff there's a day and night cycle where different things happen there's even like platforming and stuff you end up like platforming and going to different areas and breaking down sort of barriers in order to access different areas it's something pretty different but it does kind of remind me of like Tobal one which had like a quest mode in it and like that was such a cool thing back in the ps1 era because you had something beyond just the standard fighting game it gave you a lot more sort of substance in order to you know play this game sort of beyond just the one-on-one -on -one fighting game or the tournament style stuff so i like this mode you know i'm interested to see kind of how it expands throughout as i get deeper into it like i've said i've only played about two hours or so in it but i think it's pretty accessible i think it's pretty pick up and play and while the story and the narrative and the mode itself probably won't make people want to game buy the game strictly for that mode it is definitely nice to have and it's definitely a nice distraction from the main game the next thing you'll visit is the battle hub area and initially I didn't know what the hell this was. Like, I didn't know what was going on here. There was a bunch of people. I'm in some big area. It's like a big hub, hence the name Battle Hub. And I'm like, okay, well, what am I doing here? Well, what is my goal? What is my mission? So on and so forth. But then you quickly realize what this is. Now, 
we just talked about creating this avatar character for the world tour mode wouldn't it be cool to use that character and fight other people online as you unlock different things well that's one of the main things you do in this area you basically fight different people online with your created avatar character and try to one-up them try to see how you stack up against the competition and maybe learn something from these people it's okay you know i've done it a couple times i don't really take my created character like super seriously obviously it looks a little bit like me but as far as like creating the move sets and stuff like that i kind of just let it do its own thing so i wouldn't say i'm super invested in this mode this was probably the weakest mode out of all the three for me just because you know if i if i'm gonna fight online i want to fight with the standard street fighter characters to sort of you know learn their abilities and learn their moves and learn their combo sets so this was fine but then i kept wandering around and i found arguably one of the coolest things in this game within the battle hub section are retro arcade consoles that have basically retro games on there you want to play some classic street fighter 2 you can literally scan lines and all it almost looks like a crt sort of image on here and you can actually get a high score and see how you rank on the leaderboards there's also final fight there was some shoot 'em up game that's actually been cycled out now for um super puzzle fighter 2 turbo which is a game that admittedly i've spent way too much time on it doesn't seem like an rgt game but i, I don't know something about these match puzzle games except for columns i never got into columns but something about these match puzzle games always do something for me and they're very addictive and i always end up playing them a bunch but this is so cool it's a rotating cycle of games as well capcom's going to be adding in and removing stuff in there so like this is awesome and this isn't just like little puny demo versions of the game it's a full game you could sit there and play a full game of street fighter 2 a full game of super puzzle fighter 2 a full game of final fight on these little arcade machines awesome little attentions to detail like this are so important in fighting games because we've talked about two completely different things already we've talked about the world tour mode which is kind of like a pseudo open world exploration style thing based on street fighter fighting mechanics when you get into the combat we're not talking about classic retro games and an area where you could battle with this avatar that we've aforementioned for the world tour mode Here's the crazy thing. We haven't even gotten into the meat of potatoes of the game, which is the actual fighting, which is the actual one-on-one -on -one combat that everyone is coming forward to and wanting to play this game for. So the fighting ground is your more traditional style of things. It has all of your basic arcade modes, your story modes, your versus modes, your tournament modes, anything you want in the basic realm of a fighting game is where you will find in this. Now I will say admittedly, the arcade mode was kind of disappointing. I was hoping for like some cool cutscenes and stuff like that and i mean there's some stuff you know there's some some artwork done in it but there isn't actually any like cutscenes, like in-game cutscenes or anything like that which i felt it's a little bit half-assed because some people really like the stories of these street fighter games I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of them in the world or anything like that i don't know the lore like a lot of people do but i did feel that this was a little bit half-assed i would have liked some in-game cinematics or something like that now as far as the fighting is concerned this actually brings up one of my problems with the game but thankfully you can fix it this game tries to throw down your throat this this modern control style and i, I don't get it like there's light attacks there's there's heavy attacks but they're all mapped to one button so i don't know what the hell you're doing there's special attacks that are mapped to a button as well it just it doesn't feel good to me and the problem is that is on by default and some game modes such as the world tour mode it actually takes you a while till you get to a certain point when you could turn that off by default i believe classic control should be the thing where you have three punches and three kicks because that's what people are you know that, i feel like that's what most street fighter players are accustomed to maybe this was added into street fighter five and i'm just an old fuddy duddy man but still give me classic controls all day i want to have all the control over my characters that i can have and you know that's just the way it is so i would i wish that the classic controls was the focus of the game now as far as the fighting is concerned it definitely feels a lot like classic street fighters but there's something brand new added into this game that sort of incorporates other elements of other street fighter games and that is the drive gauge at the top of the bar you have your character's life and then underneath that you have another bar which is the drive gauge now the way that this works is basically it's for like focus attacks counter attacks special attacks stuff like that and the more you do these things the difference they will make on the drive gauge itself so some things will 
drain your drive gauge a bit more than other things but they definitely incorporate different elements of different street fighter games within this drive gauge making it kind of like accumulation of everything up until this point the combo system is also based on a three level system as well so there's a level one combo two and three that of course plays a role in the drive gauge as well so it really gives you a level of customization and of course you could do like both, both people do focus attacks whoever drive gauge is higher then it trumps their focus attack some really fun stuff is able to be done within the fighting mechanics of this game if you've played a street fighter game before you'll probably be able to pick this game up and play it pretty comfortably but once you get sort of under the peel the layers of the onion you know you start to see a lot more deeper mechanics than was in previous street fighter fighting games that's not to say these games were shallow because ultra street fighter 4 had tons of meta to it but i feel like this with the drive gauge actually offers you more meta more depth and more different things that you can do in order to control your character to your liking style of course there's tons of online stuff that you could do ranked modes and casual modes there's a full replay system that will save your replay should you choose to choose that um as far as online play is concerned i have had one issue with one game there was a little bit of stutter on online i've played about 30 35 matches online and beyond Beyond that one little stuttering thing i've had no problems whatsoever it's been extremely smooth there has been no lag no sort of you know input lag or anything like that and it's just been a very very enjoyable experience as far as the graphics and the presentation are concerned there's lots of cool stuff here i know some people were turned off initially by the graphical style of this game oh it looks like fortnite but it doesn't look like fortnite we need to stop this whole something looks like fortnite just because it has some colors to it it has a different you know visual style i think the visuals in this game are excellent in the fighting portions of it there's some really cool scenery as well in the world tour mode there are some areas that look a little bit crusty i feel just kind of like, eh. but there is a performance and a quality mode when you play at performance mode you're getting a smooth 60 frames per second throughout the experience audio wise you have all of your sort of different songs your remix songs you of course have all your grunts and groans your hadoukens and all that sort of stuff and there's actually a commentary mode i'm going to play a little bit of the clip from the commentary mode right now i thought it was going to be super obnoxious and sort of over the top because whenever i watch like fighting game tournaments like they don't shut up they just yell a lot but i think this is actually very well done and adds a little bit to the experience they're one of the best crowd big counters takes a trip Player two chases them down, grabs them, life lead opens up, mm, taking stock, oh god this is tense don't come from behind to pick up the win. as far as characters go there's a bunch of new ones there's a bunch of familiar faces there's obviously your ryu your guiles your zongeefs there's more characters coming into the game as well i really haven't dabbled too much with the new characters because i'm a traditionalist i'm a fuddy-duddy old man and i stick with what i know but overall this game has definitely definitely impressed me the amount of content in this game it's absolutely insane especially considering we're talking about a 60 dollars fighting game here i feel like they've really sort of set a standard going forward as far as what these other fighting games are going to be able to do obviously tekken 8 is a 3d fighting game so that's a little bit outside of the norm but like mortal kombat 1 like they really need to bring their a game here because street fighter 6 i think it's one of the best games i've played so far this year you know it, it's probably not as good as like tears of the kingdom but they're kind of different genres but like this is definitely one of the better games i've played this year i would put it right up there with resident evil 4 remake and i feel like you can even get more bang for your buck with this game if you're a fighting fan because of the amount of characters in it because of the amount of modes in it and the things that you can do and the retro games are just the icing on the cake with this so highly recommend this game $60 well worth it there's collector's editions and stuff like that I just bought the standard $60 edition of this game and I'm blown away man it, it, it's it's super good like Capcom is is one of the best developers out there right now it's a shame that Exo Primal is gonna come along and screw all that up because with Resident Evil 4 remake and now Street Fighter 6 like freaking a man they've been nailing it all cylinders go now give me that dino crisis remix you son of a bitch anyways those are my thoughts on street fighter 6 i hope you guys enjoyed this video i know a non-nintendo video two non-nintendo videos in a row we talked about a mortal Kombat movie and now we're talking about a street fighter game not available on nintendo switch because 
not a Nintendo YouTuber. I'm telling you, folks. I'm telling you that hopefully this gets some good views. So share this video around with your friends to let them know that RGT covers all platforms. And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you are new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. We're on the road to 500,000 subscribers. We'll get there eventually, maybe. And as always, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Later.